Well, good morning. It is Tuesday, September the 26th, and it's another rainy morning. God knows what he's doing, so we just give him full rain. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for blessing us with the rain. We're going to go straight into the King James Bible, the book of Galatians, chapter 5. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. <clears throat> Beyond, behold, I, Paul, say unto you, that if ye be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ has become of no effect of you whatsoever, whosoever of you are justified by the law, you're fallen from grace. That's very worthwhile to listen to that. I'm going to read it again. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you be circumcised, Christ shall profit you nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, you are fallen from grace, because you haven't accepted Jesus Christ. I just added that. For though we, the Spirit, wait for the hope of righteousness by faith, for in Jesus Christ neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but faith which worketh by love. He did run well. Who did hinder you that you should not obey the truth? This persuasion cometh not of him that calleth you. A little leaven leaveneth the whole lump. I have confidence in you through the Lord that you will be none otherwise minded. But he that troubleth you shall bear his judgment whosoever he be. And I, brethren, if I yet preach circumcision, why do I yet suffer persecution? Then is the offence of the cross ceased. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. For brethren, you have been called unto liberty. Only use not liberty for an occasion to the flesh, but by love to serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. He's quoting Jesus. But if ye bite and devour one another, take heed that ye be not consumed one of another. This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth after the, against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lavishness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, Against such there is no law. And they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. It's the end of that chapter. Okay, this is familiar ground to most of us Christians. You know, this is quoted time and time again. But the thing is, it is easy to be led astray. 
there's subtleness in Satan and his ways, okay? Um, if you follow, uh, what, what is the correct term, astrologists, you know, the, the signs of the stars, you know, Libra, Scorpio, and all that, it's ways of the witchcraft, okay? It is witchcraft. Ghost hunting is witchcraft. Tarot cards are witchcraft. By the way, someone shared a post from uh, a weird sounding name post. And the content of the post made sense. It was an agreeable post. But the originator of that post on Facebook read tarot cards. Therefore, she deals in witchcraft, not of God. So we have to be careful. Do you see what I'm saying? We have to be careful. We have to let the Holy Spirit give that power of discernment for everything that we do. All right? It, it, it is, it's a subtle thing that can catch us up. You know, we think it's, it's innocent. We agree with content. But when you find out who the originator is, it's Satan. Okay? There, there's no other word. Okay? Pastor Ken, bless your heart, Pastor Ken. You came right out and said it on Sunday. Halloween is demonic. If you have anything to do with Halloween in your home, throw it out in the trash. Yes, I agree with that. It seemed innocent enough. Kids dressing up and getting candy. The kids look forward to it. But you know what? Our church offers an alternative. A harvest celebration which is in keeping with the Bible. Okay, they, they celebrated the harvest period. That's what we're in now. That's what they're in, the Jews now. They're celebrating the harvest period. Why shouldn't we? Why do we have all of a sudden Halloween? I mean, it's very name, All Hallows' Eve is, is you know, <laughs> it's just, okay. So there's the subtlety of it, you know, and we've fallen foul of it. We have fallen foul of it. We got rid of it. We didn't like it. We argued about it. We talked about it. We reasoned about it. We now firmly believe it is from Satan. Okay? The Holy Spirit takes over. This is what this chapter is telling us as well. You know? The ways of the flesh. Analyze everything that you do. Is this pleasing to God? And what I'm reading, is that pleasing to God? Would Jesus sit down beside me and read that? Would Jesus stand beside me and do that? Would Jesus stand beside me and say that? Is this something that, what was the expression, what would Jesus do? You know, we need to keep that in the forefront of our thought processes. In everything we do, say, think, hear. Okay, we need to think, is this in keeping with the Spirit of God? And if it's not, if there's a question mark over it, and you're unsure, then stop it straight away. Research it, analyze it, find out where it's coming from, all right? And then go back and make your decision. Pray on it, pray on it, test the spirits, okay? This is crucial. This is crucial too. We must test the spirit. I know this is getting deep into stuff, but you know what? When we pray and ask for guidance from the Holy Spirit, Satan himself composes the angel of light. Satan himself can pose as the angel of light. Where do you think the whole Church of Mormon came from? He's convinced millions of people to follow the Church of Mormon. I don't, you know, I just, I shudder at that. I shudder at it. I shudder at that because all those people that believe in that have condemned themselves to hell. Can you believe that? Can you believe? And it's just because they've been led by the wrong person. They're going to walk into hell with a smile on their face, thinking they're doing the right thing. Oh, 
that is just so painful. That is just so painful to think. Everyone is accountable to Jesus Christ. The great white throne of judgment. You've got to make up your minds. You say, am I doing the right thing? Am I walking in the path of Jesus Christ? Whew, weighs heavy on my heart, you know. Daniel Moretz, South Africana, who preaches the word, the Bible. He's young. He used to be a model, believe it or not. He was a male model. I think, you know, he used to drink, have orgies, you know, do all the bad things. And his two brothers died at 20 and 21. One was killed in a road accident. One was shot in the chest by a drug dealer. And his eyes were open. The scales fell from his eyes. And his dad was a preacher. I mean, his dad cast out demons. He was a demonologist preacher. And yet this is the way Daniel went. But his eyes were opened. And he now is praying and preaching in South Africans to his country. That was his last video he made. The whole video was in South Africans, had English subtitles so we could follow it. He was desperately praying for his country to get back to Christ. And we should be doing that too. You know, it's... I mean, in, in, in South Africa, there's a lot of stuff going on down there. And, you know, it's a little microcosm of civilization right down there on the tip of Africa. But, oh boy, are they vulnerable to the world. And the world is coming at them fast. And he said, you know, this kind of, they were founded on religious principles, just the same as America was, on religious freedom. Oh, man, I better stop. <laughs> I better stop. I better stop. Yeah, I'm getting a message. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Have a great day. Remember, consider everything you're doing. Okay? Good rainy day. Time to sit down and, and, and mull things over in your mind. Is this what God would approve of? Is this what Jesus will be doing? If it's not, cut it out. Cut it out. Cut it out. Remember, God loves you. I love you too. Thank you for listening. Have a great day. It's a rainy day, but so what? So what, you know? If you're retired like me and you don't have to work, then just grab yourself a cup of coffee, put on some nice videos, put on a couple of preachers, go listen to them. Watch a couple of nice videos. Relax. Enjoy your family that's around you, your pets, your wife. You know, your husband, have a good time. And if you have to work, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no. Okay, have a great day. God loves you. I love you too. Bye for now.